What's up everybody? It's David here at Smidge Garage coming at you on this beautiful but blessed day. I've been giving this a lot of thought. Just trying to figure out what I want to get into next on my 1980 CB750F. And I think I come to a conclusion. Join me along. Let's check it out. I'm gonna be honest, I don't even know where to start on this thing. I guess we'll start with pulling the floats. I'm gonna put them in like this, one, two, three, four. I guess we'll start with that. See what it looks like in there. We'll just go ahead and get this out in the air real quick, you know. You're looking for that perfect representation on how to do this. Scroll to the next video. We're going to do something I hadn't done before, and that's open one of these bad boys up. My goal will be to get it to where I can put it on the bike and kind of run gas to it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit pause. I'm going to come over here with some carb cleaner. And I'm going to shoot all this dirt off. And then I'm going to come on back and I'm going to get all these screws broke free and then bring y'all in when I open it up. Looking like that one's going to be real fun. And that one's going to be real fun. All the other heads look fairly good. That one. And that one. They look like they're going to be all kind of fun. Alright guys, so those two screws required a lot of unorthodox help to come out. But hey, I've got them out now. So let's get these remaining ten out and... Did I say 10, 3, 6, 9, 12? Yeah, it'd be 10. Because I got two out. Then we can work on uh, popping these bowls off and start to get a grasp of what we're working with here. My hopes is since this carburetor was stored inside. My hopes is nothing like what I've seen in the past. But we shall see. Let me get these out and I'll bring y'all back. All right, so I got all these out. What really happens, guys, is here in the States, most people don't know or they don't recognize the JIS standard and they'll just put just their number two Phillips on there or a regular flathead in it and it strips it out so let's get these off now I really don't want to mess no gasket up I don't have any kind of rebuild kit for this so is that smart? no but, ooh, to the wee, guys. Mmm, nasty, nasty, nasty. Float free on this one. The needle and the float are free on this one. Like I mentioned, I'm going to put them in kind of like this. So that we can kind of go back like that. Actually... I'm going to drop them in how I'm taking them out. Yeah. Because if you notice, this little drain, 
Uh, sure, it's making it where you can't really get in there to it, but whatever. Easy, easy. Break free, buddy. Just broke free. I felt it. Not 100% free, though. There we go. Awesome, that gasket, mm, that's nasty. That gasket didn't break either. Now, mm, smell like old gas. Is it wise to use old gaskets? No. Probably be best to put new in. Will I? I don't know, guys. The needle and the float are free on that one. I don't know what this damn thing is, to be honest with you. I'm almost scared to take this one apart, but hey, let's do it. I smell old gas. So these things have definitely had some... Okay, that's a Venturi. Wait a minute, something just dropped. Shit. It was an O-ring. I got it, guys. I got it. Pay attention when you're doing something. This one looks pretty good. That little O-ring went right there. Because I don't want to lose it, I'm going to store this one facing up. Man, if I would have went down in this crack, oh my gosh, dude. That would have been game over for me. Hmm. That's a weird little thing. Looks like it sucks air. What do we got on this? Dude, I got a free needle and a free float. So that's really good. Last one. Excuse me, guys. Kind of wish I could get out and go walk today. Oh boy, this gasket's sticking. But the weather's really bad. So that's not proving to be a viable option for me today. Which is kind of bad, you know. Um, when I say bad. Yeah. Um, oh shit, guys. Okay. So what I had over here is the gasket is semi sticking to the carburetor body, and I would like for the gasket to come up with the bowl. don't think that we're going to succeed a hundred percent here we're not so let's let it fall that way I can put it together that way I can take it off like I said ideally realistically the best thing to do is to put a new new gasket on here my gosh, man, what in the hell have I gotten into, guys? <laughs> you know, they had problems, and they, uh, that's why this one was such a pain in the ass. Somebody made a homemade gasket right here. Okay, so it may be in the best interest to do the to do a gasket kit. Anyway, what's done is done, right? Question of the day is are we free? The needle in the float is free. So Let's go back in orientation 
Let y'all take a peek at what we got. Really looks nasty, guys. Honestly, probably seen worse, but it is what it is. Cool. So I was actually getting ready to start pulling the jets. But I think I'm going to get online and I'm going to look for a rebuild kit for this because a lot of rebuild kits come with the new jets. Honestly, I would rather use the original Kian. But I definitely am going to have to have gaskets and stuff. Air fuel mixtures. So, Man, I mean, would it really matter if this one accidentally got put back in this one i don't think so i don't think that would really matter i mean i can't see why it would to be honest man rather intimidating guys but problems arise so solutions can happen okay so i got everything stripped down here i know i cut this video down but be honest these are so difficult when they're gummed up that it just took some gentle taps and steady twist with the screwdriver to get them to come out as y'all can tell I do have everything grouped for each bay so you've got a little needle down in there and they're attached to the barrel so now I'm going to pull the barrels out so to do that it's just two screws on each on each comb and I'm going to group these in collation with these right there I'm going to leave the bar together so that all four of them stay together so let's do that so we got the first one out you got a spring here this is your slide and this rests down in there now I did not pay much attention for this but let's just do it like this guys this is your guide and that's your guide right there so it can actually really only work one way so it'll go back in just like that. I'm going to repeat the process three more times and I'll bring y'all back. So I've got all these out with the exception of this one. There's absolutely nothing to adhere to. For these three, I did have to get my impact out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my die grinder and I'm going to cut a slight slot in here. Then I can use the impact on that. Oh yeah, guys, that worked like a charm right there. Just cut a little slot in there, put your impact in there and tap it. Get it to broke free. What it is, guys, is this is the top of the carburetor. So all the water, all the moisture from rain and stuff like that. That's what hits this. And you know, just over time, shit just kind of gets a little, little done in. So we pull that on. See the spring stayed seating. So, so I want to make sure I'm staying kind of in line with this. You know, one, two, three, four. So I got that there. I'm gonna go ahead and take my spring out. Flip it. And then we can go ahead and take this. I gotta bust this slide. I think this slide is stuck. So let's just kind of open her up right there. Get this flat head and just, just gently, gently. Let me try to get y'all a better angle. Gently try to press it. See it move? All right, 
and I think we're good, guys. There we go. You know, just over time, things just kind of sit, get corroded together. It's not an issue, but you can't get go hung. you got to be patient. All right, so pretty much, y'all see where it was sticking. Pretty much got this carburetor tore apart. With the exception of these things. Technically, I probably should take this apart because there's one on each one. But I don't know if I will or not. I still got the throttle tied open. I think off camera, I'm going to open this, just see what it is. But honestly, I'm thinking about just shooting some spray down in it. My objective really is to get these carburetors just cleaned up. Where we can um, put it on. See if we can't get this bad boy to run. As y'all can just tell, I uh, just dropped a bunch of these. They're down there. I need to get them, guys. That one's still in. I am in no way claiming what I'm doing to be correct. In matter of fact, it's probably a little OCD for most people. But I guess there's a method behind every madness. I just feel like for so many years, these components have worked with this bank, with this bank, with this bank, and this bank. So why do I want to swap it up, you know, and now take this one over there? Will it work? Yes, absolutely. These are 100% universal. I just feel like that's the way it's been. That's the way I want to keep it. So I think I'm going to end for right now. When I come back, we'll probably start cleaning. Catch you then. And because I was super curious of what's behind door number one, it appears to be a diaphragm pump. Uh, I don't know, guys. I don't know. Hmm. That looks like a lot of headache just to check each one. Uh, we'll see. I think it's going to be in the best interest to take all these apart and check each one of those because what I did notice is there's an air passage in there coming through here and it's going to be important for that to be clean. So it's going to happen. But just not today. I'm ready to shut my shop up today. I'm actually kind of cold, guys. And I've had a long day. Not a long day, you know, but a long week at work. And I just want to go sit in the house a little bit. Spend a little time with my pooch. Boy, I've never opened up a can of worms like this. I mean, yeah, I've done other jobs that... It's kind of complex, but I'm talking about carburetors. Oh, man. Going to be a lot of pictures took along this process so that going back, I can refer to them. Also, there's a site that I like to use. Um, give me just a minute, guys. It's a CMS LN. I believe that's what it is. I don't particularly get parts from them very often but they have diagrams on there so you're able to pull it up and have a blueprint diagram of how things go together so that also helps too which I'm probably going to screenshot those so that I can have it oh boy this is a complex thing so I'm assuming that these slides come up and down by vacuum pressure I'm just trying to figure it out because they're not by wire so that's what's confusing me like I said I've never opened up a carburetor like this this definitely is not like any carburetors I've fooled with for mm, look at that anyway I'm gonna shut shop up today guys and uh head on up into the house See, I got that battery on charge, so the next time I get ready to mess with it, it'll be good, and we'll make a good progress on this girl.
I just want to get it so that I can put that carburetor on there, bottle feed it, and let's let that motor run a little bit. Well, first, we got to tackle this bad boy. I think it's going to be important to to clear that passageway, otherwise, uh, won't work. So I decided to come on back out to the shop. Been giving this a lot of thought. We had a pretty good storm and looks like it popped my TV. So, hey, that's okay. We'll work something out. So I've been giving this exhaust a little bit of thought. I don't want to buy an exhaust yet, but I do want to put something on there. I do have these old XJ650 that, if y'all remember, was completely trash. But that's not to say that I couldn't cut these right at that that angle there and see if they wouldn't work for, say, just an open header. I wonder if this flange would fit this. Well, I'll be. This might be a temporary solution to a problem that I have then I could eliminate those hmm maybe they're trash anyway so I'm going to cut them and get them ready definitely not showroom quality but I believe we can make this work just to have some short tube headers on here it was nice seeing that this original muffler for my xj650 is is a clamp on here i will be saving this for that bike but y'all remember this stuff here it was just all rotted out so i wasn't losing anything it was gone but i can save the muffler and i am saving it for my xj650 pretty sure i'm gonna need some washers because I don't think these acorn bolts will go down far enough. But I'm going to blow these out. Get these cleaned out. And just get them loosely mounted up on here. Now since this came off of a 4 into 1. I will have two pipes. That will swing out to the right. But that's not going to be an issue. Eh, not a bad short term solution. To a long term problem. If there was anything I didn't like, it would be that number three exhaust pivot right there. But guys, remember this was a four in the one. Okay, cool. Kind of curious what it would sound like. I guess there really ain't but one way to find out. And let's just bust it over real quick. Yeah, that sound much better, guys. Cool. Last time. Then we're going to get back to what I was originally working on. Ooh, you hear that starter. Hey, that sounds much better, guys. I'm into that. I'm digging it. Low buck, no buck fix. Okay, let's go. So I've been giving it some thought. A complete rebuild kit for this is about $160, give or take some. I really would hate to drop that kind of money into an unproven motor. Kind of why I just wanted to put those homemade headers on here I want to be able to get this motor running kind of on its own so that I can put this on the service jack and run through the transmission 
So with that being said, I think I'm just going to tediously clean each and one of these parts the best I can between some carburetor cleaner, wire brush, and soaking it in some chemtrol. Now obviously I need to be a little careful because this is an air passage pump right here and it's on each, each one. So I don't need to get this really soaked down with that stuff. But if I could clean out all the passages, clean out all the jets, and go through these one at a time, clean them real good, and then put this bad boy back together, maybe it'll hold long enough that I could get it running and do that. So that's what I'm going to work on. So I've really done number on here. Got it good and cleaned up. As y'all can see it. Um definitely passes light through let's move on over to that one definitely and so on and so on got all these cleaned really good cleaned all the we can see through them gone in on this side here and of course you know your your main and your low jets that's what we just seen so I got that fairly clean. I mean, a lot of that's where gasket's going to be. Is it perfect? No. Will it work? Hmm. Hopefully. Let's move forward. All right. So I've kind of got them, all of them put in, with the exception of this last one. I figured I'd save that one, do it on camera real quick. I've already got these put on. So. Basically, we're going to go together kind of how we took it apart. Actually, exactly. You got a ridge on these. It's flat and it ridges up. The ridge needs a face towards you. All right. From there, I'm cleaning these parts as I put them on. It's my two screws. So now I'm going to clean this because this will sit down in there. Obviously, like that. It's important to note that all of the needles still had a very, very nice point on them. So they wasn't beat up, rounded, or anything like that. So that's really, really good for me. Just kind of cleaning them, you know, spraying them down real good. See if I can't rub some of that old varnish off of here. Because obviously I'm not putting them in a parts washer. I don't have a parts washer. Alright, that's real good. Got that good and clean. I'm going to blow it off with some air real quick. Looks pretty good. Now remember, we talked about this earlier. That's, that's your guide. This actually holds your, uh, hey, my air compressor, come on. You want to just slide that in there. Moves good. I'm going to set my spring up in here. Now we're going to go ahead and clean the inside of this. I may just wipe a little bit of this down real quick, too. These can go either direction. It really don't matter. I prefer mine to be uniform. So I'm gonna put the key on all up. This will be the engine side. This is the air filter side. So this is your fuel side. This is your air side. Also, that one screw I had to slot, I put it on the air filter side. Just so if I ever needed to take it off again, it's on a uh, friendly side.
these technically take a JIS. I really don't have a JIS other than my uh, impact driver. So definitely need to put that on my to get list. So now I want to check and see if the slides go up and down, if they fall back like they should. Lift it up. Perfect. 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 And nice, guys. So our slides are just how they are. So from there, I will move on to the bottom. And that's where it's going to get really fun and interesting because I now need to clean all of this. Chances are, I'm just going to take the big stuff, the floats, all of the orifices and jets and all of that, and I'm going to soak them in a, in a container overnight. And then just late, lightly clean what I can here. My goal is I don't want to destroy these toe rings and stuff. So when I get all that cleaned up, I'll bring y'all back. Real important tool to have if you don't have one. These are acetylene torch cleaners. Really nice, different sizes. You can get in these small orifices. Hey, if you got a wire brush, break one of the chips off. You can use that as well. This just has a lot of different sizes. A lot of carb cleaner and compressed air and some patience. And those three are your friend, guys. I'm going to get to working on that and I'll bring y'all back when I'm ready to assemble. Well, these old parts have been soaking actually for a couple of days. It's been a couple of days since I. It's the last, uh, I was messing with this. Y'all can see I've already got the carburetor assembly kind of, I got them in a clean spot. I didn't want trash to get to it, but I think it's time to take this stuff out of here. And um, I got everything up in here. So it's time to take it out. Let's run through it one more time with the wire brush, a little carb cleaner, and then Let's uh, start going back together. Let's get this uh, going here. So we're going to go on and pour the rest of this mixture back in the can. I'm going to hold my cap on here. Hopefully nothing will fall through, you know. Just because I've done it a hundred times before don't mean today ain't going to be that day. I don't know. Let's give it a try. Thankfully, the stuff really hasn't... Uh, everything stayed down there at the bottom. I got my air on right now, guys, because I'm fixing to blow all these parts off and lay them out here, and then it'd be time to start going together with it. This thing looks pretty good, you know, just peeping down in there. See how it looks on the flashlight. You can see right through it, guys. So I'm gonna get all these parts here. Go ahead and get them out, put them out, and we'll start going back together. So I got everything cleaned out. Guys, I can see light straight through the orifices. All the jets. I can see right through them. I cleaned them out with my uh, my acetylene torch cleaner. I've inspected all of the 
on the uh, needles. Rubber's great. I did not soak these because it will damage the rubber on here. So it, even spraying them with carb cleaner will kind of do that. So you have to be careful when you go to clean these right here. And uh, y'all can see, right? Okay, yeah. All right, so let's uh, let's go back together. Um, put the floats in first. So you so you square on that end. You got a little slot right there. You'll take it. Put that up in there. We'll drop it down inside that. Not like that, you know. <laughs> uh, we'll clip it. Kind of drop it down inside the uh, the hole that it goes in. <laughs> Not like that, guys. It's kind of difficult to be honest with you. But once it's inside that hole, it'll it'll stay centered on this um on here. All right, so we got that. Let's put a, uh, oh man, looks like I'm missing one. That is not good, guys. Get a rail guide. Slide that bad boy up in there, like so. Get it lined up, that's good. So, we've got one, got two, I got three. I am kind of looking for the number four. Here it is. No, there's one. Okay, I got it. Oh, I was getting real worried, guys. I was getting honestly really worried. All right, we got that one in. Let's do the next one. Get that. I'm only really showing this because a lot of people don't know. Really and truly, a lot of people do know, but a lot of people don't know. And, you know, it's a wonderful thing to don't know and to have this asset youtube and and google and stuff like that because i'm here to tell you you know i'm really old school and when i was growing up you didn't have that asset you just had um oh hell that didn't work you know if you know what i'm talking about same thing it goes in this hole right here. I know y'all can't see very well because of where I have this, but that's, you know, it's going to be okay, guys. I promise it is. I actually commend anybody that is, um, you know, willing to get in there and try because a lot of people won't try. They'll just go, Oh my God, I don't know what to do. And well, it's a lost cause. It's not a lost cause, guys. It may take a little effort, but it's not a lost cause. So anyway, that's enough of that. I'm pretty sure. Slip that on there. That, that holds it in. That seat is very nice and pointed. I like that. I really do. Now this one I expect to have a little bit of trouble on it. We may have to, uh, y'all remember this was the one that was kind of difficult coming out. I'm not gripping it guys um this will work i'm not gripping it at all i'm really just trying to press it some more it's in there all right boy i just lost a flathead screwdriver down there i'll have to move two toolboxes to get it good 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 Good. Okay, so um, we're gonna do the 
the Mersin Jets next. They actually have this the the needle. Y'all remember on here it had that needle. The needle actually goes up in there. This is a hundred percent seat. You're going to turn it down till it's snug. You don't need to bear down on it. So let's go ahead and get these and drop them in and then get them screwed down. Alright, I'm gonna go left to right. If y'all notice, I do have slight OCD problems sometimes and sometimes it's okay and sometimes it's really irritating. But, you know, hey, we are the way we are. So I got a snug there. Hmm, that's good. I already got them in there. What am I thinking? I ain't thinking much, guys. I ain't thinking much. Alright, and the last one. Now we're going to put the low idle jets in there. That's really tiny. Um, I can see light through all four of them. These are so small, I'm just going to do these one at a time. I'd hate to sit it up there and uh, bump this carburetor and lose these and have to spend the next, you know, good bit of time trying to find these. I'm already going to have fun trying to find my little flathead screwdriver that fell through my crack. And I actually had to make that screwdriver to fit this specifically, so I think I want it. So we're going to, after we get these low, low end jets in, let's, uh, You know what, I'm gonna pause y'all because, and put these bowls on. It's boring guys, come on, it's, it's three screws. It just drops in. The way these bowls work is, is this right here is your overflow tube. So if your float and your needle in your float, you know, if your float gets defective, gets a hole in it, feels full of gas and it stays down, this is going to let gas, this is, your gas comes in right here. The needle is what closes your, your fuel from overflowing your carburetor. But what these are is if you have a failure with your, with your needle or with your float and the fuel gets high, this is a means of escape. It flows down that tube and comes out here and you know, you'll see the bikes and they'll have those little little you know 10 inch 12 inch tubes on there that's what that's for it's a means of not so the gas won't flow into your motor it can flow out and you can catch it so i'm going to get these buttoned up on here and then i'm going to bring y'all back and we're going to put the air fuel mixtures in there okay real quick i want to point something out in case y'all are doing this and I don't want you to make a mistake or anything like that and honestly I didn't give it no thought either and I didn't put it on wrong but it dawned on me you see your plates right here and right here this one's the same it's flat it has the one hole for it to go on but you see this one here and this one has an extra little hole on it that goes to this one right here. So, that way you won't make the same mistake. That one goes there. That little O-ring will seat right there. This is a little, like a little air pump. All right, let me get these mounted and now I'll get back with y'all when I'm done with that. So let's point this out real quick as well. 
and then we'll move on into the air fuel mixture you know if, if you're if you're concerned that you take all this off and you're going to put it on wrong it's almost foolproof guys I mean that little piston right there it sits on that uh that throttle assembly there but these things got you know tabs on them so it can only go on this bowl one way I mean on on your body one way you can't put it sideways you, it just it's not going to happen I could understand that being a case you know pinching your your stuff if just one but it's got two so it's foolproof you know it really is I have no idea if these gaskets are going to hold I mean they looked okay but I mean I've been married before you know looks is deceiving anyway that was another side mark but get these all put up in there you know and well some of these screws was kind of janky I'm making sure I put these out here this is the fuel side this is the air side so this will be the side that's easier to get to once it's on the bike so if I need to remove a bowl or anything like that and I can't get a screwdriver to take it off I could put them vice grips on it and do it it's not a big deal so when it comes to the air fuel uh, mixture valves and these everybody gets really intimidated by them and there's really no sense in doing that guys let's carburetors are complicated but you can simplify them so with these here you know you want to make sure that you that your needle in it's good you want to make sure you have your spring your basic rule of thumb for these a basic starting point for almost any carburetor on the air fuel mixture screw is one and a half turns out that is actually where these were when I disassembled this so what you're going to do is you're going to carefully put that in there you don't want to bend this you do not want to bend that running it too tight will damage it you want your spring on there you're going to set it in here you're going to do that and you're going to take it down to it's just right at snug. I mean, finger tight, snug. And then you'll turn out one and a half turns. And that's how you set it at one and a half turns. So I'm coming in. See, I'm not putting a lot of strain on this, guys. Um, coming in. Coming in, coming in, coming in. Coming in. See, it hit bottom there. That's snug. I could probably get another quarter turn, but I'll damage it. So we're straight right here. All right, so let's go one half, one, one half. And we got to sit. I'm going to repeat this procedure three more times, and that'll be that. So just like that guys, I rebuilt the carburetor, tore it down to next to nothing, cleaned it, and rebuilt it. Um, you know, if, I, if this proves good and I decide to go with a complete rebuild kit, which, you know, has all the diaphragms and all new gaskets and stuff, that's going to be wonderful. That's going to really bring life to this, but right now, my goal is to put it on this motor on this engine I'm sorry guys let's just be honest an engine is gas and motor is electric and just see if we can't get it running good so what we're going to do real quick and I don't have to but I want to it's just an old trick I learned a long time ago and I just want to kind of bench sync this I want to make sure the flow is the same on here so what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, I'm gonna come on off of this one. I got two Allen wrenches. I happen to be using one eighth inch, and I'm gonna set it in there. 
with a flat up. So what I should be able to do is I should be right at being able to get this one eighth inch on each one of these. If I can't, then these are not synced right and they'll have to have adjustments on here. So I got the flat right there and it just barely goes. I actually feel it kind of scraping. So this one is in sync with this one. Now I'm going to come on here. Got the flat up. Perfect, guys. This one feels, I can feel the drag on the top. I can feel the drag on the bottom. It sinks together. Now the last one here. Get this flat up. Perfect, guys. Perfect. So this is a peace of mind for me to knowing that the metering flow is the same on all of them. And looking down in there, everything looks perfectly aligned. So I believe we are ready to move forward. Yeah, I believe we're ready to move forward. So I'm going to have to look and see just how long this video is so far. And, and see if we're going to go ahead and continue forward and we'll just have a long video. Or I'm going to see if I just want to split it in half and just have the carburetor rebuild. And then we'll have installing the carburetor on another video. Not real sure, guys. Just not sure. I'll get back with you. So I just couldn't help myself guys got a makeshift tank hooked up on here I've got some slight leakage y'all know that old cardboard uh gasket it's leaking had one float that on a uh, number three here it was leaking a couple taps with the screwdriver that went away but this number four right here it's leaking around that gasket, but you know what? I just can't help it, guys. We're going to put it on this bike, and we're going to see if we can't fire it up. I really have my suspicions because I, I think this goes to a, a vacuum, but listen, this video is really long. Views are going to be down, guys, but hey, man, we've come this far. Let's at least see if it's going to bust off and semi-run with the carburetor. So let's just get it, guys. All right, so I'm not sure how this is going to work or even if it's going to work. I know I got two needles that's not seating fully and two gaskets that's leaking on the bottom. So it's going to be hit or miss. But if we could get it to run for a few seconds versus the instant burst of the starter fluid, that's what I'm looking for, guys. So let's give this a try. And no, I haven't bought another battery. So here's hoping. All right, I got the fuel on and I just shot a little starter fluid in there. I really don't want it going long because I know that it's kind of leaky. But you know what, man? I just want to see. I just want to see. Uh oh, we got this one light that ain't quite making. understand why that one light ain't on that's okay it's probably a little scoopy stuff here let's shoot it again with a little ether and i may have to choke it let's choke it and let's just see if that helps uh where's the choke at choke like that. Let's give it old half choke. Damn old starter. Let's open the throttle up. Huh. Oh, I don't know. Maybe. 
Maybe we can just open the throttle some. That like one start, didn't it, guys? turn this gas off because I want to run the carburetors empty so let's do it one more time you want to try it without starting fluid first yeah let's try it without starting fluid man awesome we're gonna try it without starting fluid and I got y'all pretty close to the to the exhaust here so you can hear it I do got the gas off remember I want to um, I want to just go ahead and run out these carbs. <laughs> yeah! Did y'all hear that thing run? That's awesome. Obviously, the carburetors, they're not synced, you know, so it's its running rough, and obviously it needs a true rebuild, but we got a, man. Yeah, I got a repair in the shop. I took time from the repair to do this. Man, that's awesome, guys. Uh, I think my next step's going to be is we're going to, get this thing on the uh, service stand and I want to go through the transmission but I'm going to call that a wraps today guys I really am guys I want to thank y'all for hanging out with me over this period of it's probably been about a week week and a half I've been filming this thank y'all for hanging out with me watching the crazy things I do in the shop taking time out of y'all's busy schedule you know it's just something y'all don't have to do but y'all do it and I you know greatly appreciate it Hey guys, give me a thumbs up, comment, share, like, subscribe. I'd love to have you here at Smitty's Nation. Give me a thumbs down. I mean, probably deserve it, guys. Remember, guys, that the grind never ends. Hey, find something that you like to do. Do it today, and tomorrow, do it better. Thank you, guys. From David here at Smitty's Garage, I hope that your projects are going fruitful. I hope they're going your way and that they're plentiful. Y'all have a blessed day. David here at Smidge Garage. Peace. I'm out.